Hi, I'm Jeff Morris, uh, Vice President of Product and Solutions Marketing at Couchbase. Thanks very much to VM Blog for this opportunity to talk about what's going to happen in 2021. So coming out of 2020, human behavioral changes have had a really dramatic impact on the economy and on the priorities of IT organizations. So rather than simply improving automation or analytics or migrating to the cloud, digital transformation initiatives are changing their focus to address user experiences because user behavior has changed so dramatically. Users are online, they're no longer in store, but they're on mobile devices and they expect personalized experiences like where did I leave off in the movie? So we think 5G is rolled out just in time because the last mile at the edge is where the action is going to be. You'll start to see a cloud connected web of mini data centers that connect to all manner of mobile and edge devices in homes, on Main Street, in hotels and cruise ships and planes, wherever people go. 5G makes it fast and location aware. Cloud makes it affordable. AI makes it smart. And NoSQL databases make it flexible and scalable. But it's the IT staff and your developers that need to make it usable. The result will be that your grocery app in your shopping cart will always be half full with your favorite food. Uh, all your future trips will be awesome. Uh, all your content delivery services will only suggest shows or stuff that you like all the way to your doorstep. Everyone's going to know your name wherever you go. And Delivery vehicles will be double parked everywhere. Good luck in 2021. Thanks very much. Hi, this is Paul Speciali. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Scality. As we enter this new year, we once again see the industry changing rapidly, this time to what is being termed cloud native. Cloud native entails the use of containers to deliver software services and deployment and management of those services on Kubernetes. Many of these services will need to be stateful. That is, they need to create, store, and recover data for things like databases, for backups, and massive amounts of unstructured data. These are things like videos and images and documents. Our prediction for 2021 is that cloud native applications will fuel and tremendously boost the growth of object storage. It will become the predominant paradigm for managing unstructured data in the cloud native world. This also creates an opportunity for new storage solutions that fit into the agility, scale and consumption patterns for these applications and fit very nicely into the Kubernetes environment. Thank you very much for listening and I wish you a wonderful 2021. Thank you. Hey there, this is George Demarest from Kyligence with our 2021 predictions around the area of cloud analytics and big data. So the word for 2021 will be more, 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 more. That is more analytics, more insights at different levels, more concurrent users, more data, uh, everything that we have been experiencing up until today, uh, but more. And uh, that's going to require uh, some smart use of uh, pre-computation technologies like um, that we work on at uh, Kyligence. So basically um, distributed OLAP analytics uh, to speed up your queries, uh, but also the use of machine learning and AI to scrutinize cloud usage, to scrutinize query optimization and to optimize those queries. Um, this is something else we're also working on at uh, Kyligence. So more, 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 more in 2021 and the use of intelligence to both keep an eye on the cloud bill uh, and cloud usage and also to enable uh, many more users, much more data, many more queries, and in the end, pervasive intelligence. Hi, this is Keram Koga, Managing Director and Co-Founder of Brunet Technologies. I predict that cloud-only service providers are going to be the superstars of 2021, and let me explain one, why. Uh, we, we predict that we're at the end of the beginning, which still means the beginning, but end of the beginning of cloud adaptation for enterprise workloads. If, I, if you want me to quantify that, uh, we're currently at 23%, uh, which will be around 40% by the end of 2022 and 80% by the end of 2024. And this is cloud adaptation. In other words, cloud adaptation is going to double in two years and quadruple in four years. 
uh, in return, this is going to be uh, a very bad year for legacy IT providers. Like 2020 was bad. I think 2021 is going to be very bad and continuation of many bad years to come for legacy ID, IT uh, providers. Uh, as we help uh, our uh, cloud partners like Snowflake and ThoughtSpot double, triple their businesses, uh, we will um, at least do that, if not more, um, as a cloud-only service provider, uh, and we are looking for, forward to 2021. Hi, my name is Chip Witt. I am the Vice President of Product Management at SpyCloud. SpyCloud is a uh, company that specializes in recovering data from third-party breaches and making that information available to companies to proactively defend against account takeover and other online fraud. We essentially help prevent the criminals from profiting off the data that they steal. COVID-19 is something that has impacted our lives in ways that, quite frankly, we've most of us have lost count of. The criminals are thriving in this environment, of course, because any situation that creates strife, confusion, panic in others is something that criminals will try to leverage to their biggest benefit. And they're doing that quite effectively. One of the things that's actually helping them is the fact that the balance between work life and home life has been very, very deeply impacted by the situation, people working from home more, they're not going into the office. So the mindset that often surrounds the work environment is absent. So people that are you know, working with their family, setting Netflix accounts or cable company accounts or gaming accounts or other sorts of things with shared passwords with their family, very quickly can bleed into the corporate environment by virtue of, that's eh, a good password, I'll just vary it by a character or two and suddenly, you have a password that is uh, easily exploitable by a criminal if it gets exposed in one of those areas that would seemingly be personal, but because of uh, the habits kind of blending between the two worlds, that it's it's no longer the case. It's it's very much a corporate threat now as well. This is something criminals they count on. They count on the human nature aspect of password reuse, and this is something that we need to guard against. We need to be proactively defending against that exposure. Um, when a credential is exposed online, we need to be able to proactively defend and prevent that password from being used in our environments. We actually encourage you to visit spycloud.com. Check out your own exposure um, by putting in your email address or your domain and see what your exposure level is across all your accounts. Perhaps you're going to see something that surprises you and that could pique your curiosity into having a conversation with us. Regardless, we hope that you stay safe and make sure you're enforcing secure passwords everywhere. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Kumar Goswami. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Comprise. And at Comprise, we provide a data management SaaS service that analyzes, moves, and manages data across any file and object store, including, of course, cloud stores. And my prediction for 2021 is that cloud storage costs are going to rival and eventually exceed cloud compute costs. Now today, the bulk of the cost of the cloud is due to cloud compute costs, but that's gonna change. Compute costs will grow at a much slower rate uh, than storage costs, and eventually the storage cost component of your total cloud cost will exceed compute costs. Now, why am I saying that? Well, first of all, reason number one, we're hoarders of data. You know, most of the data we generate, we don't throw away. Take your cell phone, you probably take the same picture of a subject multiple times, you probably like one more than the other five, but you're not gonna throw the other four away, right? That's who we are. And if you look at our regulations, it requires us to keep data, uh, old data for extended periods of time. Um, and so data is continuously accumulating. And then as you do more computation, one of the byproducts of cloud computation is cloud data data in the cloud, which again continues to accumulate. And so it's for this one reason alone that you're gonna see an exceeding larger and larger cloud storage cost. There's another reason as well. We're now using the cloud to store our files. Originally when cloud storage began, we were just uh, storing objects. But if you look at it, our applications are all designed, the ones we have today are all designed to use file protocols and files. And so they didn't run easily in the cloud without it being having to be rewritten. 
Well, now cloud providers provide file services in the cloud. And now it allows us to run those applications in the cloud. And as we do so, it generates still more data, which again accumulates in the cloud. But there are other reasons as well. Now that the companies, cloud storage companies provide file stores, you can do other things with it. For example, you can do DR, disaster recovery. So instead of replicating your files from one data center to another one, you can now replicate it to the cloud and thereby having a much cheaper way to do disaster recovery services. And similarly, you can protect your files from cyber attacks. By taking a copy and replicating your files to the cloud, you have an air gap copy that's safe from cyber attacks. So you're gonna see more and more uses of the cloud now that file store is available in the cloud. And the other thing is that guess what? The cost of storing files is about 10 times more than the cost of storing objects. Another reason why storage costs are going to eventually exceed compute costs for the cloud. So these are the reasons why cloud storage costs will eventually overtake compute costs. And this is why you will need a data management solution to efficiently manage your data and dramatically reduce these costs. Thank you.